last week, the International Energy Agency warned that these supply cuts would create a significant supply shortfall. So what is the outlook? Well, let's get the lowdown live from Jeddah in Saudi Arabia from Cornelia Mayer, Chief Executive of Mayer Resources and Independent Oil Analyst. Good to see you again, Cornelia. So I looked at Brent today. It's hovering above $94. A barrel. I filled up my car yesterday and it was painful, a lot more than it has been in recent weeks. That's where we're going, isn't it? Where are we going? And you said it brilliantly, um, Sally. Thank you for having me, by the way. Um, what we see is we have the U.S. economy going gangbusters, you know, and the demand for jet fuel and the demand for gasoline is up, the demand for diesel is up, and there's not enough diesel produced. Diesel is a real, is a real problem at this point. Um, and then you have the Chinese refiners going, not actually the economy doing well, but the re refiners wanting to, to produce more diesel to bring it into the world markets. And the guys who produce, who have the, the, the heavily sulfurous um, and um, heavy crude, um, which is Russia and um, Saudi Arabia, have taken out 1.3 million barrels out of the equation. And yet, Cornelia, we've already talked about in this programme the, the UN summit that's going on in uh, New York this week, which is largely about climate. Uh, we talked about hydrogen just now. We've got more in the programme uh, about alternative energy. And yet we are, de we are demanding right now fossil fuels and will be for some years. And this is the problem, isn't it? Because we're looking to companies and countries like Saudi Arabia to change their ways and solve our climate crisis. And yet we all are demanding fossil fuels now. But China, Saudi Arabia is actually changing its ways. It has one of the hugest renewable energy projects globally. It um, produces the lowest, has the lowest carbon footprint on the way it produces oil. Uh, that's one thing. But also we have to see this global net zero by 2050 is extremely amb ambitious and extremely I expensive as well. So when we look at this for the OECD world, it will be expensive. We might get there. We might not get there. But in emerging markets, in developing countries, it is probably it's just not possible to get around fossil fuels. We still we have 700 million people living in energy poverty. We'll have 2 billion people more in Africa and South Asia, mainly by 2050. So if we if we totally do away with oil, we'll have, you know, we'll have um, you know, epidemic proportions of energy poverty. So we will need to deal with fossil fuels, but there are ways of decarbonizing. You know, net zero does not mean zero carbon. There is carbon capture and storage and all sorts of, of, of things that one can do to take carbon okay. out of fossil fuels. Just briefly, Cornelia, and I mean briefly, um... Where's the oil price going then, do you think, in the, in the short term? And what will that do to inflation? In the short term, it's going higher. It's ticking higher. And it will be, I mean, the, 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 the Fed and the Bank of England and the ECB have interest rate decisions coming up. And it will make them leaning toward upping the interest rates again. So, yes, it's, it's not good news um, for, for interest rates in the, in the, um, in the short run. OK, lovely to see you, Cornelia. We'll see you.